listen, O virtuous one. I will show you the truth of your being. You are, and always have been, Vajrasattva, the infinite consciousness, living presence, and creative power of the divine. the vast spaciousness of being, always good, the way of liberation for all beings, beyond appearance and disappearance. And beyond the grasp of the intellect. Love being our essence, attainment is already complete. And there is no need to strive at practicing great compassion. Love being the supreme good, there is no need either to extol the many splendid qualities of compassion. Phenomena are not other than the true condition. Without input on our part, they appear and disappear. Naturally arising wisdom need not be actively sought. Self-liberating by nature, it reveals the way. Earth, air, fire and water are the indwelling divine. Despite our mistaken notions, liberation dawns from within our own being and is not dependent on others. Supreme wisdom is difficult to realize except by way of wisdom itself. Dependence on others is merely notional, since bliss actually arises naturally from within. And yet, the miraculous is not beyond our recognition.
due to intuitive insight into the natural state, our innate capacities and spiritual powers come to the fore naturally from within our own inner depths. Real meditation is effortless letting go in the true condition. This true condition never appears to us as something which can be seen. Striving to grasp it, we prevent the recognition of its true nature. Nor can the supreme secrecy of the primal continuum be revealed by hearing about it. Nor can words reveal its nature, even in the barest measure. The suffering of sentient beings is only consciousness. Intrinsically perfect energy in varied forms, beyond movement, unshaken, it abides equally in all. People talk of karma. In truth, there is only consciousness. Beyond all our notions. For those imprisoned in the ups and downs of thought and emotion, the pristine continuum of awareness remains hidden. The mind of awakening gives rise to all appearances. Being unborn, it is indestructible. This timeless space of pure being is beyond the reach of thought. The deepest meditative tranquility does not think of itself as this or that. There is no need to conceptualize 
or to purify the mind of concepts. Although wisdom may, as it comes to the fore, take the form of concepts. Some meditators strive to put their minds into a thought-free state thinking this gives them access to something subtle. They isolate themselves in lonely places. Examined closely, this is seen to be a form of conceptual meditation. Thinking in terms of causes and results, such seekers strive to transcend this world. They reject the bad and accept the good, although non-dual wisdom already transcends dualities like bad and good. Clinging and indifference are concepts. So too, echo-like, is anything in between. Joy and sorrow arise from the same source. So declares Vajrasattva, refuge of all. Where else could aversion, attachment and anger arise, except from the luminous energy of mind? Objects of pleasure are also just this. Formations of the energy of the light of wisdom. Concepts are like space, but neither space nor concepts ever come into true existence. Abiding in spacious consciousness, beyond desire and directed intent, one's condition widens to infinity. Concept-free equanimity is the ground of being. But like the moon reflected on water, it cannot be grasped.
through the divine creative energy, the vibratory sounds of speech are manifested. The mantric sounds of ah and ta and pa and their many elaborations express the creative power of infinite consciousness. and figure forth the mind of light. How amazing. The enlightened realm is never found by seeking. And can never be perceived by the six senses. Those who seek it in this way are like blind ones grasping for the sky. A graduated spiritual path of purification is at odds with the effortlessness of the true condition. Realization does not come from following such a path. That is like searching for the end of space. The true condition, being what it is, revealed as it is, cannot be seen as a path to travel. The state of effortless enlightenment is the source of all. Its manifestations are all marvellous wonders. past and present abide within the true condition. The eternal now of consciousness is the path for all. This is suchness, the light of wisdom. The realization of enlightened beings, both past and yet to come. This living presence is the universal way. The moon and its reflection on water are non-dual. 
The mind of awakening is not to be found by those engrossed in fabricated features and stages of the way. Focusing attention on present pleasures and their future consequences is a limiting way to follow any path. It is something to avoid. Past, present and future are one, not three. Only the present has endured throughout time. The nature of reality pervades the whole of creation. Its wonderful qualities everywhere to be found. Everything that appears in all the worlds derives from karma, is rooted in concepts and is phantasmal in nature. Even the situation of a universal emperor is merely a training ground for dealing with illusion. Those who meditate using the time-bound intellect will never be liberated within the time frame of their imagining. For those whose practice is rooted in prayers and striving, everything said about emptiness fully applies. The essence is one, unstructured, unborn. And the way of the yogi is like the path of a bird in the sky. How then can we suppose that phenomena actually exist? Inner and outer phenomena are both the one real condition, which is not an object to be grasped by the conceptual mind. The things of this world are mere names based in mistaken concepts. And so it is, we fail to experience the equality of deep contemplation. The outer and inner spiritual commitments that we take up pertain to the constituents and senses of the body-mind, 
which has never been other than the true condition. There is therefore no benefit in talking about spiritual commitments. Appearances, symbols of the all good, never change into something other than presence. Never being other than presence, appearances are therefore wisdom. In the absence of grasping, nothing has a self-identity. Absent rejecting, there is only the equality that transcends speech. All possible circumstances and all beings in them arise non-duly from the pristine continuum. In the purity of divine presence, there are no such distinctions as male or female. In the domain of reality, there is no talk of getting somewhere by means of effort. And yet some say that by using the powers of sound, one can generate the bliss of a magical illusion. The true condition cannot be grasped conceptually, but appears in varied ways according to how one views it. To strive for bliss, desiring it to manifest, only generates obscurity and confusion. Meditating on the appearances of a deity is like meditating on the reflections of the moon in water. Although such meditators strive to be undefiled and unattached, their practices are like child's play. One may even identify fully with a wrathful deity in a mandala of wrathful attributes and unmistakenly manifest the seed syllable and yet not experience the suchness in which concepts disappear. One may crop a palm tree or burn a seed to prevent them proliferating, and some teachers even advocate such a destructive approach for students who wish to overcome their emotional problems. Moreover, there are hundreds and even thousands of methods for practice, and they all blossom in their own way.
but since pristine awareness is beyond characteristics, it is not revealed by practices such as these. Blessed are the yogis who abide continuously in the true condition, not discriminating between self and other. They enjoy the magical illusion while abiding in the great perfection. All phenomena are perfect and complete, nothing excluded. The true condition is a quality beyond change, spaciousness without limit, beyond dependent arising beyond causes and conditions. Incomparable wisdom alone knows the blissful continuum of self-perfection, the domain of the ultimately real which does not arise from extraneous causes and conditions. This insight is easy. So easy, in fact, that it seems difficult. Though all-pervading, the continuum is invisible. It cannot be pointed out by saying, this is it, not even by Vajrasattva himself. This amazing, wonderful display of energy, spacious by nature, transcends action. From within our deep unknowingness, beyond thought and thinking, these dynamic potentials suddenly arise. The energetic radiance of consciousness dwells in all and is the way for all. For those lost in ignorance, confused by obscurations, it is like a medicine in search of a doctor to prescribe what is needed. From within the field of our understanding, bliss arises. Revealing the ordinary world 
as pristinely pure. When lights from all directions come together in one's heart, one realizes omnipresent divinity above, below, and in all directions. From the colors of the rainbow, the primordial families and their qualities are manifest. Compounded moving parts in the uncompounded, unmoving base, along with deities of the five elements that animate creation. Notions like past, present and future cannot comprehend the nature of the unborn, unceasing. In truth, nothing arises, nothing ceases. The wisdom of Source unifies all and dispels any such notions. Equal in all its manifestations, there is nothing to gradually arrange. All forms being one in reality, nothing needs to be dedicated in any direction. We may accumulate and arrange our various offerings. But since they occur naturally, they need no arranging or distribution. The true condition being intrinsically perfect, there is no need to make offerings. Pure from its inception, the pristine continuum is already wisdom nectar. There is no need for our minds or our senses to visualize or intend. All phenomena are already arrayed and consecrated by the mind's judgments. The spiritual power of clear seeing is the equipoise of contemplative stillness.
even an instant of this contemplation is divine union. The satisfaction of this union fulfills all spiritual commitments. Going through the dance steps of various spiritual practices, one is, in reality, offering the state of union non duly Non grasping is already the perfect offering. Beyond any need for practice, the consummation of all practices which is already present. Non conceptual wisdom eliminates every obstruction. Contemplative equanimity is the perfect mantra. To honour spiritual teachers, practice generosity and perform all manner of merit-making activities becomes a form of ignorance when performed in the absence of equality and non-attachment. The wisdom conveyed by this teaching gets obscured by active striving. When envisioned by conceptual grasping, the true condition cannot be realized. 